Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rotoro Football Show, where I am Patrick Darty, joined by another man named Patrick, Patrick Crane, Denny Carter, and Kyle Dvorak. The regular season is over. The playoffs are here. It's the wild card round with six games that everyone two years ago was like, I wish the wild card round was six games instead of four. <laughs> and uh, now it is. And we've got two teams that have no chance to win. Uh, spoiler alert to our <laughs> breakdown. Uh, the Dolphins and Ravens, of course, have zero shot of advancing to the divisional round. But we will talk about this games. We will talk about every game. But first, we're going to talk about development not involving the playoffs that some of you seemed taken by. And that was the Houston Texans requesting permission to interview Sean Payton. Some of you thought this was heartwarming or touching. Yeah, it is like uh, heartwarming to see that some organizations still have hope of attaining things that are so far beyond their reach that most of us wouldn't have conceived of them doing such a thing. So, uh, I mean, imagine Sean Payton coming out of retirement. Like, he can do media work. He's, I, I don't know, I think he works like some football consulting or something. He, you know, his life set. He can do whatever he, wa he wants. Uh, and instead of doing those things, he says, I'm actually going to come back and be a coach of the Houston Texans. Like what, Pat, you supposedly have a theory on how this is coming together. Like, I think the uh, obvious thing is that like, even if he interviews, he won't be going there because he's coming out of retirement. It's, it's up to him essentially if he wants to play for them. He's just like, oh no, instead I'm actually, re I'm retired. It was never, a, it was a bit, it was a bit. If the Broncos <laughs> say they're going to pay $20 million a year for him, he's actually unretired. He will, I assume he won't coach for them. You have a, a theory? Yeah, I think he's going to coach for the Houston Texans because Wait, Sean Payton was he's almost. He's really? almost 60, I did not think that was on, the theory. Hold on. It's a, it's a theory. Oh. Uh, he's almost oh, no. 60 years old. And he's just taking a year off. He's thinking about what actually matters to him at this point in life. And I think that's fishing in the Gulf of Mexico. And, uh, you know, if you're not going to be based in New Orleans, Houston's about uh, the second best option you can have after Tampa Bay. It's not right on the Gulf. You got to go in some canals and stuff. Uh, but very easy access to his golf fishing. Football is really his kind of afterthought. He's like, yeah, whatever. Texans, and he looks at the roster. Okay, he's like, oof. Wish it was better than that, but whatever. And he, he goes, boy, football must have really changed yeah. in the year I was gone, because I don't recognize yeah. any of these names. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he just goes there because he's going to spend four days a week fishing on a very large, very well, you're, you're, boat. You're painting a picture of a very checked out Sean Payton. <laughs> is he checked out to the point that he maybe is going there to coach Deshaun Watson? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, right, nothing. I haven't had any big changes there, have they? There's a uh, there's a non-zero chance that Sean Payton can't name three Texans. Right <laughs> there's a non-zero well, chance knows, I can't either. As of today, <laughs> he knows he knows Brandon Cooks because he coached Brandon Cooks. Yeah, right. right. Um, yeah, that's it. That's one. Yeah, he'd be like, oh, is this the same Brandon one. Cooks? Wasn't that like eight years ago? Yeah, right. He's, he's not getting Chris Moore. Moore. I would, I would, I would bet he's not. <laughs> that's not one of the three. I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that the the words Jordan and Akins mean nothing to Sean Payton. So, but you you have to you have to credit the Texans as as Kyle said before the show for shooting their shot. You know, look if if they shoot their shot on Sean Payton. What says that an XFL team doesn't come up and say, Sean, we're ready for you. We want you to come in and coach our team. Well, because there actually is an XFL team based on a Gulf of Mexico oil rig that they play <laughs> in the actual Gulf of Mexico. And if the fishing is what is most important, that actually might be. Uh, I think they're called the Louisiana Roughnecks or something. It all goes um, back to the Gulf. Yeah, it all goes back. But uh, producer Adam's trying to poo-poo this theory. He said Peter King uh, said today that Sean Payton splits his time between L.A. and Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, there's some good I'm glad you mind. read Coeur d'Alene and I didn't attempt that because <laughs> yeah, that I, was Coeur d'Alene for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I've never heard of anything in the middle of the country, but definitely not Coeur d'Alene. Well, it's not the middle of the country, Denny. That's why. It's, the it's, I, it's Idaho. Specific Look, if it's not Idaho's California, like Seattle almost. No, if if it's not I, California it specifically or things where yeah. Denny lives on the East Coast, it's the Midwest. That's right. Arizona, That's right. the Midwest. <laughs> that, oh, Arizona, man. the Midwest. Yeah, every East Coaster, yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> um, you think the only thing in the middle of the country, that's where O'Hare Airport is, right? Um, that's true, yeah. Yeah, I'm connected. That's where the corn is, right? From yeah. after I leave after I leave Maryland, the corn starts. And when the corn Look, stops, it's that's how you know you're in California. Or Right. Seattle or San Francisco are the only two West Coast cities to me uh, as an East Coast. Denny, LA. what? what? Shots fired never, at LA. Never heard of it. 
Denny, what state is Kansas City in? Uh, well, I think there are uh, there's a Kansas City, Missouri, and a Kansas City, Kansas. If I'm not well, which state's the real one in Missouri? Oh, thank you. Um, all right, now Denny's he's he's see it's all a bit. He knows all about the middle of the country. I've seen maps. If you That's know true. what state Kansas City's in, you know a lot about. He the He knows Midwest. about Akron, Madison, <laughs> the other ones. Kyle, I bet you can name a disturbing That's Wisconsin, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Madison was not every team. middle middle of the west middle west team. Or Kyle Spring can Lakes name team. a disturbing amount of mid sized Ohio cities. Uh, oh, guess. Ohio cities! I could I could riff for days. I just thought that'd be too niche. It would be too niche. <laughs> <laughs> but Madison, on the other hand, that's a broad sweeping brush of comedy. You know what's niche is actually talking about the games. Uh, we're gonna do that now. We begin in Santa Clara, California. Where Levi Stadium's famous seat melting sun rays will be high in the sky is what I wrote before I read it's actually gonna be a rain. <laughs> it's <right. laughs> so yeah. it's gonna be a very rare rain game in Santa Clara because these atmospheric rivers will not stop dumping water on the state of California. The Brock Purdy led Niners attempt to put an end to the Seahawks' feel good Geno Smith story. Whereas the Niners were a terror- terrorizing buzzsaw down the stretch, Patrick Rain, the Seahawks regressed very hard. I'll just begin with the obvious question. Is there any chance the Seahawks pull an upset? What would that game script even look like? I think there's some chance that the Seahawks pull an upset. I, I'm starting to feel like people are sort of treating the Seahawks. Like as I look at these playoff tournaments and stuff, it's like the Dolphins, the the Ravens, they're almost like first round buys. And the Seahawks, it's it's not like that far off. Like they're not fully in that mix, but they're not getting treated like the Giants and some of these, like, oh, maybe they maybe they pull the upset here. Yeah, Crane, just to real quickly cut you off. That's how I did my I ranked the playoff teams one to 14. 14, I had the Dolphins, 13, I had the Ravens, 12, I had the Seahawks, and I did kind of group them in there. I said the difference being they have a functional offense, but sorry to cut you off there. Plug no, I, yeah, I think that that is pretty much consensus. And I guess I would push back on the idea that they are in the tier with the dolphins and the ravens i think they're in a different tier i agree maybe, they are a tier up i do agree with yeah that. maybe they're not in a tier with the giants but i think they're maybe closer to that tier than to the other tier because they do have a functional offense um and i also think the game script looks like seattle passing the ball and not being afraid to lean into the pass which might seem a little weird if you're thinking about this being a uh, Pete carroll team but this is a team that has been passed first this season. Seattle has a 3% pass rate of expected. That's between the Dolphins and the Jaguars. This is not a team that's like afraid of passing the ball. They're not necessarily going to go like ultra pass heavy, but that's a very much a pass first team type of pass rate of expected. And, you know, the, the 49ers have a really, really strong run defense. They have a very good pass defense as well. But I think there's a chance that Seattle's able to move the ball decently well through the air. And then on the other side, like Brock Purdy is the most popular man in fantasy football right now. He's, he's you know, you do any of these underdog drafts, he's skyrocketing up boards. I've never heard of an underdog draft or known anyone on the show who's done one, by the way. <laughs> um, but he, he is a seventh round rookie. Like there's a chance he melts down in a playoff game. You know, it's possible. So I think they're, you know, it's in the realm of possibility and and kind of mixing that into whatever contest you're doing, you know, playing occasionally that, you know what, maybe Seattle wins this, I think is a, is a good move. So yeah, Kyle Crane just kind of, he presented what would, what the positive Seahawks case would be if they were to pull the upset, they're nine and a half point underdogs. It'd be a major upset, but uh, he also hinted at what I think of really the only true realistic path I think is going to be a Brock Purdy meltdown, something he, very much did not do down the stretch and was frankly like a clear upgrade over Jimmy Garoppolo. But is that really, is it fair to say that that's the Niners only true weakness that they are starting a seventh round rookie quarterback, which is a very legitimate weakness. Yeah. I mean, I I agree with Crane that like this offense has the best chance, this offense being the Seahawks offense, the best chance of doing something. uh, I would say despite losing though, like they're roughly as big of dogs as a team starting Anthony Brown. Like they are very unlikely to win this game just based on Vegas numbers. And I mean, I really wanted to like poke some holes in the 49ers that weren't the obvious one, right. That weren't that like, we have a very small sample on the Mr. Irrelevant quarterback and our prior using the history of day three quarterbacks is that he should just not be good. And he's proven that wrong through a handful of games. I don't want to adjust our prior so 
he was even and, playing hurt like some of them like what's going on with this yeah he's fine he's fine he's fine uh, <laughs> i'm just really, saying like how how is he playing so well it's just business well the, the thing is is that nearly every quarterback plays well under kyle shanahan and i do think to your credit like the fact that he has looked as good if not better than Jimmy Garoppolo, that is not entirely the doing of Kyle Shanahan, right? I think we know that Jimmy Garoppolo is somewhere in the starting caliber level of quarterback. And for Purdy to come in and really, I think he's fine. Man, we'll see. He's a, he's, <laughs> he's a starter that you would like to find someone else. Soon. Exactly. And but, have, I think it's pretty bad sign when like even Kyle Shanahan, who can like make any quarterback do it, is like, God, I got a better quarterback than this guy. <laughs> I, I'm not saying he's good. I think it makes sense for them to look for upgrades. But for Purdy to come in and be as good as him, like that is – if he was worse than Jimmy, he would have played worse, and the Shanahan would have boosted him from being a nightmare to being decent. And he's been good. He's just been straight up good. Some of that's him, some of that's Shanahan. But looking at the rest of the team, like – it is a perfect setup for having a quarterback who you should say you're like tepid to start at least because of his inexperience. Uh, the only like serious ways I see them losing are is if we get Seattle out to a lead, which could happen. We've seen the Niners, they play like you kind of expect them to. They have a minus 4% pass rate over expected. Sam Hoppen has them as a neutral or below average pace over expected in nearly every game this year. And their schedule like kind of aligns up with that. They played two teams with 10 plus wins. The one team that got over 10 wins, Kansas City, boat raced them. The other team was, I believe, the Chargers, who they beat. Uh, so well, everyone does that. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you not know, the hard. entire any other 13 playoff teams beat the Chargers this year, by the way. It is a <laughs> pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry, to uh, <laughs> but the, the, I mean, that's it, though. They have one of the best defenses against the run and the pass. When you look at their PFF rankings in coverage, uh, you know, run run defense uh, in pass rush and tackling. Every single thing, they're top five or six, and they're one, two in a lot of them. And in, on offense, they've been really good under Purdy. So I think the easiest path for Seattle to win this game, like obviously it's like score points, but get out to a lead specifically because that's a spot the Niners have not played from and have not shown a tendency to play as if they're from behind throughout throughout the entire season. They, they run the ball a lot, they do it well, but they play slow and they don't pass. So maybe putting, especially putting this, uh, you know, last pick rookie in a spot where he is forced to predictably pass. Mm -hmm. That's a good path, as good a path as you'll find to setting this 49ers team up to stumble. But they're a really good team. Can I yeah, push back on some of this Purdy stuff real quick? Oh, yeah. Push back. Go. So put him in camp. Wait, who's 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 side are you pushing back on? Yeah, I don't know. I'm pushing, I'm pushing back against Kyle because I do. And just the general narrative, which is that I don't I don't think Purdy's been necessarily better than garoppolo he's thrown for a lot of touchdowns but even still his epa per play is lower he's still ranked he ranks sixth in epa per well first off we can't ever explain this computer obsession with jimmy garoppolo like you just like type the name jimmy garoppolo on a computer and like it runs like a flash <laughs> animation of him joining it's because he does well on third down so yeah. in situations where you would expect not a lot of expected oh. points he always does well <laughs> and then gross. the computer it's always like third and jimmy. two because it's kyle shanahan well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo being an analytics darling makes me want to become a film guy, like right now. Oh, me too. I, I'm not. Please do not take this as defensive, yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo. I, in oh, fact, that's what it what sounds I, like no. Go ahead, what, rip it. What I'm trying to say is, I think it would be almost easier to imagine a meltdown if this were Jimmy Garoppolo, and this essentially is Jimmy Garoppolo. He has he's just he's sixth in EPA per play. Jimmy Garoppolo's third. He ranks. 30th in completion percentage ever expected. Jimmy Garoppolo is 28th. He ranks just ahead of Russell Wilson. Purdy does. He ranks just behind Kyler Murray. So he's not been very accurate. It's the same stuff. It's the Shanahan schemed stuff. If it gets out of whack, I completely agree with Kyle's last point that if it gets out of whack, they could be in a lot of trouble. We also are dealing with a small sample size with Purdy. He has 206 plays this season. Sam Darnold has 181 plays in high school, by the way. Um, <laughs> Sam so. Darnold has 181 plays this season, not a ton less. He ranks 10th in EPA per play this year. He was much higher before he got a little bit exposed uh, more recently, as we knew that he would, because we have a much larger sample on Darnold. But my point is, in these small samples, things like Sam Darnold being top 10 in efficiency can happen. So I think that there's more of a chance of Purdy getting exposed maybe not in this game maybe it's down the line then people are really people seem all in on purdy like he's yeah. the real deal 
Yeah, very seventh round rookie with a small sample size, I would be open minded to the idea that he could melt down. Yeah, yeah, it, I very it, much. The the 49ers are not designed to play from behind, and no. and not not just now, but ever. Like the no. Kyle, this Kyle Shanahan Shanahan offense, when they're behind, they they flail and they don't really they don't really have like an avenue to coming back in an efficient he tilts way. out of his mind when they get down by even like three points yeah it just it all comes apart and and that's why this this uh good defense good running game model is so easily broken because if 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 you can get them out of that uh preferred game script i don't want to say it's over but it's kind of close to over i mean that's this how you the- close a 10 point spread like they're the 49ers should win this game easily. Like this will be a very large spread for a playoff game, but the way that you do that is, is what we're talking about. And it's a very different way from how do you beat the chiefs? Like you get lucky with turnover luck. You leave less than 13 seconds left. You still have to score 40 points. Like you are <laughs> so, it is so hard to kill the, the chiefs. moon needs to be full or at least just like a day or two <laughs> from being full. a waning gibbous <laughs> at most. Yeah, I don't know what that means. It's just How waning, though? How waning? You know, though, uh, Crane, I, I actually didn't realize that Purdy's uh, pass rate over expected or uh, completion rate over expected was that low. He said 30th. And yeah, 30th. it's that Jimmy yeah. special, man. The that, CPOE is always terrible, and the EPA per play yeah. it's boots up. That's, ma- that's if you, majorly concerning, I think. Yeah. If you look at them on the, the chart, Ben Baldwin's chart, um, uh, it's like he and Jimmy are like, right next to each other i mean it is literally the same thing That's it's insane. just jimmy again and like we wouldn't be i mean maybe in round one we'd be like oh they'll beat the seahawks but we wouldn't be as excited about them as a super bowl contender with jimmy i don't think because we've seen jimmy we've seen jimmy melt down i've seen we it. are we are doing uh what's, we're doing a you what's inside the box that. <laughs> with with uh, Birdie, but... we're doing a what's inside the box it could be anything even jimmy garoppolo <laughs> <laughs> this is the ultimate by the way Neither team can get behind early because Geno Smith does not yes, function right. well when playing yeah. behind. Like yeah. this is a game where I, I'm not deferring if I win the coin toss. Like <laughs> I want the first touchdown very, very badly in this game. Denny, it seems like many moons ago, because we've been talking about this game for a while already. We're sorry. Uh, That's fine. There's only there's only 14 wild card games. So Crane was point uh, painting the picture of how the Seahawks might gain yards, might produce some offense. Which Seahawks do we pr- prioritize in DFS against such a fearsome defense? Well, obviously, if if it turns into a pass-heavy script for the Niners, it's I'm, I'm sorry for the Seahawks. It's not it's not going to be pretty. Uh, the uh, you know Gina Smith has been really bad against pressure. The Niners are pretty good at applying pressure, not even sending blitzers, and that's obviously key here. Uh, I I would I would lean toward Tyler Lockett over. Uh, DK Metcalf. I was because, just hoping you'd say that. I'm gonna... Yeah, well, and you know, because because mostly because Lockett plays way more in the slot, 38% slot rate. Uh, Metcalf is around 15%. Some would hope that I would have those numbers in front of me. I do not. But uh, um, and and uh, and the Niners, the, as good as the Niners have been on defense, they have struggled mightily against the slot uh, and given up big plays and lots of targets to the slot. So I think if if they are pushed into that sort of game script. Could be great for Lockett. Also, I have to mention as a sicko play. Okay, every you're, you're, you're if you're coming here, you're expecting yeah, sicko. This is going to be real bad. I think. Yeah, uh, we're getting sick. We're getting disgusting with, Co- <laughs> with Cody Parkinson this week. Oh, Colby, uh, Colby, Colby, Parkinson. Co- Colby Parkinson. Yeah. yeah, him too. Don't even him know too. his name. Co- <laughs> Cody, Cody Parkinson, and Colby Parkinson are both good plays this week. Cody's the blocker. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, and I and I and I and I'm writing it up for the piece that I eventually will have on NBC. <laughs> breaking down these. Obviously, there's some editorial oversight that will be done between now and then. Why <laughs> we're making you do a two-hour podcast as you're trying to get that posted? By the way, um, that, you know what? It's fine. I'm not. I'm not upset about it. Crane, any weird contours with the 49ers uh, rushing attack? There was Elijah Mitchell's back in Week 18s. I feel like we can never fully trust the man, Kyle Shannon. Do we expect anything strange with the Niners' backfield against the Seahawks? I don't. I mean, I know McCaffrey only had forty-eight percent snap share week eighteen, but he's been—he uh, was eighty-two percent week thirteen, eighty-nine percent week fifteen, eighty-five percent week seventeen. Uh, been in uh, seventy-plus percent in the other two games that weren't week eighteen of those of that run. I mean, uh, I'm not concerned about his usage in in, in must-win games. All I can ask for this game is don't 
be that close. I'm going to be driving back from a family get together in Columbia, Missouri, uh, with my with my beautiful kid, my beautiful family here. And uh, if this game gets close and I miss it, um, I will cry. I will. Pat, cry. You you love you love your family so much. Uh, name them all. <laughs> well, there's Colby. There's Cody. All uh, right, Cyrus. Man, I gotta. I you know I gotta <laughs> get right on my sicko plays before I. Talk. <laughs> The West Coast road tripping Los Angeles Chargers arrive in Jacksonville, Florida as two point favorites for Saturday night, Saturday night football on NBC with special guest announcer Al Michaels. Initially a pick 'em, the line has moved in favor of the Chargers, Kyle. Well, why do we think that is? I don't know. I feel like the Jags are a better team. Uh, I mean, like, I ranked, the, I, I ranked them ahead of the Chargers one spot ahead of, oh, no, excuse me. I actually ranked the Chargers one spot. Oh, you coward. <laughs> you coward. I mean, the, the Chargers have been better as of late. Uh, not elite by any means, but in the second half of the season, they are 10th in EPA per play on the whole of the year. They're 18th, so they were starting off much worse on offense this is, and then they were 8th in the past five weeks. But that's just getting them right in lockstep with the Jaguars, who have been good pretty much the whole year. And without Mike Williams, like they're definitely just going to look like the worst version of them we've seen all year. We are still, now with the regular season complete, two games with Justin Herbert over an 8 flat a dot uh actually at or above one of them is eight on the on the dot and none over nine he's, he's not throwing it deep at all with or without mike williams it's by design of the offense to some extent williams isn't much of a separation getter i don't think he's you know elite but he is a pretty good contested catch guy and at this point i'd be willing Every to take injures his back every time yeah he i mean contested catch yeah of course. Which, again we beg mike backs. williams land on a body part other than his back please <laughs> but uh, we're get open you know, oh, come try that out. he's always just open. Try he's so big. Just, he's so big. Just, Pat, sorry, he's tall. Like he's very tall. You stack two of me and I still in a trench coat <laughs> and I still couldn't stop him. So he, he doesn't get open a ton. You are all right. Separation, not his skill set. Contested catches, which not maybe the perfect pass, but at this point, I'll take anything. Just throw deep to anyone. And they're not doing it. For reference, he has I said Justin Herbert has uh, two games with an eight out over eight, none over nine. Trevor Lawrence has seven and three of those respectively. This is what a functioning offense looks like. So to me, I just find at home to the Jaguars to be a strictly better team in almost every respect than the Chargers. Hmm, wow. Uh, so Denny, uh, we, Kyle laid out the Chargers there a little bit. What do you think the Jaguars offensive approach might be? And by the way, Denny and I explored the West Coast road trip narrative for the mm -hmm. Chargers, but then he shot it down, pointing out that it's not like a 1 p.m. Eastern game. So they'll no. actually be like, they won't be sleepy. Uh, they, it's real sad. Right. They, will, they will be awake, uh, unfortunately. So we can't we can't go with but that. The, the Jags offensive approach, Danny. What do we expect? Because a lot of people were upset, uh, all yeah. of us, I think, included in week 18, by the amount of first down runs dialed up by Doug Peterson against an elite Titans run defense. Yeah. So now they play a, a heinous run defense uh, in the Chargers uh I, I can't imagine that they're not going to establish it here. And I guess that means, you know, if, if things go well, Travis Etienne should see a pretty big workload. He has 55% of the team's rushes since uh, week 10. The Chargers allow the league's sixth highest rate of positive rush plays and the fourth highest rush EPA. Um, everybody can run on them, uh, basically. So if game script is right here, I think ETN becomes something of a something of a workhorse, which you need if you if you're playing him in DFS, you need that to come to fruition because you can't bank on much pass game involvement for ETN. Un unfortunately, uh, I I do think that that's what they'll they'll try to do, and I will say that the the Chargers have been at, as um as few fans as they have at oh, home. Oh man, come on! They have been particularly way worse on the road than at home. So maybe they do have some fans who are supporting them, rooting them on. Maybe they're very comfortable at SoFi stadium, whatever, but they, they, well, they, they know all of their fans by name, all 10 of them. They can say, Jim, hey, thanks Brad. for coming out again, <laughs> Brad, you, Teresa, it's an honor to have you here again. Oh, and that's comforting. Oh, you know, Kyle, that's actually a great point. I, I wish I had thought of that. Uh, yeah. Close friends as opposed to, you know, just a lot it, of yeah, it's right. actually, it's a, it's actually a competitive advantage because uh, it feels more <laughs> like a family. So <laughs> only, only the Packers bears and lions have allowed more yards per play as the road team this season than the chargers. And this is going to be an extremely hostile atmosphere folks. All right. We saw at, it last week at the bank. Uh, yeah. At the, at the fed or whatever they call 
that place. Uh, so, so yeah, I think ETM will, will be the 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 main cog. Fortunately or unfortunately, that's I think how how it's going to go. On this two game slate, then if CMC, I'll let you get in a second there, Crane. If CMC is too expensive, we just ETN in every lineup, no matter what, Denny. I mean, if you're playing the two gamer, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm playing that, the two gamer. I play the short probably. slates in the playoffs. It's the only time I ever I'm, win. I mean, six games, someone could call that short as well. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, I want even shorter though. Crane, what were you going to say? Well, Denny mentioned ETN, you know, being the guy, if the game script is right, what if he's the guy, no matter what the game script is, because to the point of Doug Peterson, you know, running and running and trying to establish it against the Titans run defense, I think they could, this could be a trap. This could be a trap. This is a Jaguars, a Jaguars offense that has been trying to be balanced no matter what. And now they get a team that you do attack on the ground, but the Jaguars pass defense is terrible. And so while I, have shared a lot of the frustrations with Justin Herbert this year. I think they can move the ball against the Jaguars defense. I mean, it's one of the worst. It's it's almost Raiders level bad. So it has me feeling like maybe, you know, the Jag like this game could sneak up on the Jaguars where they're trying to do their thing, they're doing their thing and it's like the Chargers are hanging around, hanging around. Now now the Jaguars are down and it's like, all right, you got to abandon your game plan. Um I think I I just as bad as Brandon Staley was playing his starters, the Doug Peterson approach to that Titans game was just as concerning. Quite concerning because the Titans not only are elite on the ground, they are horrendous through the air. Horrend- I will say, funnel. and it's established, everyone throws on the Titans. Yes. Yeah, th- it was bad. It was bad. But I will say, I'm not going to fault a coach like too awfully much for a suboptimal game plan when he's facing Josh Dobbs. Oh. Like, I like. They were just trying to get in and out. They, I mean, it, and they almost did not get out. It was bad. Like, you should yeah. not do that. I'm not defending him. I'm saying I'm putting a little uh, 0.9 multiplier on how bad it was <laughs> because you can reasonably project your opponent to score three and a half points. <laughs> so, Green, what do we expect the Chargers passing game approach to be if Mike Williams is out? I always, it's easy to forget just how bad the Chargers offensive line is and how maybe that has played into just how short the average depth of target has been. Like, are we going to get like, is this going to be like a 10 to 12 Josh Palmer target type game behind Keenan Allen? If Mike Williams doesn't play, or is it going to be less predictable than that? Well, I mean, I think we can count on plenty of dump offs to Austin Eckler. Um, he looks he's like a one of the strongest. hell of a guy. Just he's a model American. Just, by the way. Yeah, I just I just think he's gonna have a great playoffs, and I'm rooting for him. <laughs> you know, I think, and I think uh, he's gonna have a good game this week. I mean, you look at the lack of a deep threat um, with Mike Williams. I mean, Josh Palmer is not exactly a, a scary deep threat for opposing defenses to worry about. How did um, Josh Palmer become the deep threat? By the way, when Mike's out, I mean, I know they don't have anyone else, but like, yeah, that would have been Jalen Knighton, who's also a win sprinter. No, not helped, he's obviously. torn he's ACL. Hurt. Couldn't drop him from my dynasty team for like two years for some reason. Uh, continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> there's no there's, moving on. <laughs> you've got Keenan Allen, and and obviously the the Jaguars are going to know that he's going to be trying to operate in the middle of the field and, and draw a lot of targets. And I think he will draw a lot of targets, but I'm the, setting the over under 13 and a half targets for Keenan Allen. It's a fair, it's a fair yeah, over under actually. Yeah. But there should be plenty of additional dump down stuff for, for Eckler here. So that would be, I think we see big concentration of those two guys. Man, Eckler going nuts would be quite, man, well, you're going to have to really pay up for who, who would you rather have uh, for the wild card round for this, a Saturday slate. If, if money were no object, Christian McCaffrey or Austin Eckler. CMC McCaffrey still. I think McCaffrey. It's yeah. close though. It's not a bad debate. Yeah. I think it's the, still CMC. Uh, the, C- the Seahawks have given up the highest rush EPA in the league since week 11. Yeah, but is that bad? Is that what is last? Is that, yeah, come on. Yeah, is that worse maybe... than the other ones you're saying? We like it. Yeah. Highest. By a lot. Wait, 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 what did I say? I'm just okay. You said highest. I don't know what the confusion is. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. Right. Uh, on, no one has been worse per <laughs> EPA against the run. Yeah, come on, Kyle. Uh, Kyle, is there a way to decide between Christian Kirk and Zay Jones these days when it comes to Jags, pass catchers? And is it Evan Ingram season? It's been Evan Ingram season uh, quite frequently down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, like, is there a way to decide? Sure, maybe. It depends on what you're going for. In the second half of the season, it's been a slight, a very slight Zay Jones edge in terms of target share, 1%, and air yard share, 2%. 
not awfully meaningful, frankly. And over the course of the year, Christian Kirk has still been significantly better. He averages more yards after the catch despite having a higher ADOT, and he has a much stronger yards per route run. The gap has narrowed over the final few games of the year of Christian Kirk versus Say Jones, but on the whole, I still think it's Christian Kirk, though. It's not much more than a coin flip. And yeah, Evan Ingram's like coasting on a 20% target share as a tight end. Fire him up. Fire him up. I think it is still Christian Kirk, by the way. Just uh, I would say Jones that could really come out playing for his guy, Derek. It's Carr. it's a it's a Schrodinger's Jaguars receiver situation. You don't know what it is until you uh, until you observe it, and you'll be wrong no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> very very true. And true. we'll be we'll be wrong about more stuff right after this. Just a reminder: if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app, go download it now. The contests are free and easy to play, and you have a shot to win thousands this weekend by predicting what, predicting what will happen during the wild card round and in the Premier League, including two shots at one hundred thousand dollars by guessing the outcome in our Sunday night seven contest between the Chargers and Jaguars, as well as the Ravens and Bengals. This year's worst game of wild card weekend is the injury ruined Miami Dolphins arriving in Buffalo as nearly two touchdown underdogs. Denny, what, if anything, can a Dolphins team missing Tua Tagovailoa, Teddy Bridgewater, and likely Raheem Mostert even do? I mean, it's, it seems like a million years ago already that the Dolphins played the Bills to a pair of regular season standstills, but they have not only the skill player injuries, but as we've talked about, the offensive line is in ruins. Yes. Like, what, what would a Dolphins victory even look like in this game? Right. So, I, and uh, again, I, I wrote this up uh, eventually. One of these days, I'm going to have this on the site uh, in written form. <laughs> Uh, but I'll share, I'll share some of, some of my thoughts on, on what a Dolphins, but well, let's say neutral game script might look like. And that's, and that's establishing it. And that would go against completely go against everything that Mike McDaniel has done this year. But I really don't think they have a choice. Like they're down to Skylar. Thompson. Yeah, they got to go keep away mode. Don't See, they? Right. Skylar Thompson is not good. Okay. Like he's really, really not good at anything. He's and and he's unwilling to throw the ball downfield, completely unwilling because I, I don't think he has the arm, honestly. I don't think that he can do that. Um, he's not mobile. I know he he had some mobility as a college quarterback. That's not come to fruition here. Uh so Raheem Mostert possibly being out in this game with a thumb injury leaves Jeff Wilson possibly as a as an interesting option uh against the Bills. Now, you may remember that what three or four short weeks ago when these teams played um, most had 137 yards uh, on, on the ground uh, against the bills. Uh, the dolphins had the highest rush EPA of that week uh, when they played Buffalo. So I don't think they're going to try to go toe to toe with the bills. Cause you, that that's, that's a 47 to seven outcome for the dolphins. I think that keep trying to keep, yeah, keep it away, establish it, grind the clock, that sort of thing speaks to maybe massive volume for Jeff Wilson and uh, the other guys get, being sprinkled in uh, in that backfield. They want to make this game ugly. Otherwise, they cannot get there. They cannot win. Can I get, Denny, as you were talking, I was just picturing three men in welders, masks, and torches working on Raheem Mostert's thumb. Um, <laughs> they really, really, really need him to play badly. That's interesting. <laughs> and I'm sorry, this is this how my just take people behind the curtain a little bit. This is the kind of stuff. That goes on in my head. Um, so yeah, they, they're they're going to need to stat. Crane. Yeah, and, and I, I want to mention about the Dolphins' offensive line. It, it, here's another reason they can't do what they've been doing, which is just to throw it and throw it and throw it. Uh, Teron Ar Armstead, who probably will miss this game with a, a variety yeah, of, of injuries. Right, we can assume he's out. So with him in the lineup, the Dolphins are around league average in, in quarterback pressure rate given up. Without Armstead this season. It's a if they give up a 47% QB pressure rate that is outrageously high and uh, by far the highest in the league. So Skylar Thompson will have zero time in the pocket uh, if if he has to drop back a bunch in this game. Patrick, are you going to say something? I was. Yeah. The the other thing is that the Dolphins are terrible at defending the pass. They so. are. So like, bad at it. <laughs> on top of all of that, you then have to protect this pass defense, which is facing Josh Allen. And so normally we get kind of like irritated when these teams try to play conservatively and, and make this a coin flip. I mean, a coin flip would be incredible. They, would, the they would love so that. You got you got to play it. You got to play it that way. You're a massive dog. Just you have to limit possessions and try to grind away the clock and just hope there's some some variance on a couple um, like, or Josh Allen throws a pick 
Josh yeah. Allen is fourth or fifth in turnover worthy plays via pro football focus. So you're going to need Josh Allen be a legend mode and you're going to need some fumble luck on your side because yep. yeah, and they're, they're going to need 20 plus Jeff Wilson carries. They don't have any faith in Salvin Ahmed or Miles Gaskin. And this is just a team. They really did not need the season to be 17 games because uh, they were already so hurt. They got even more hurt. And they have no prayer. They have absolutely no chance to win this game. Uh, but you know, but they maybe they do crane. And uh, so we're flip sides no, they now. No, no, <laughs> they the opposite. They don't. I, I'm saying, <laughs> they, I'm don't. saying they, they need to do anything they can to just make this so, game. All in a game, them. the Bills surely wish they weren't playing. If not for the unfortunate Demar Hamlin situation costing them a shot at the number one seed, they may have not been even active on Wild Card Weekend. They're going to be trying to get it. We're talking about getting in and getting out of a game. It's hard to believe that could be a team's approach in the playoffs that is going to be the bills approach here uh what could that mean in their backfield well you know there's been kind of uh, an idea that maybe they're saving james cook for the playoffs and maybe they are but this is they're not there yet you know like if you're saving james cook for the must win you know high scoring games let's wait until we get there to see that i think they're i think they roll out devin singletary very trustworthy in pass protection they know what they're getting, kind of more the chunk yardage, short, short. Uh, they, they tend to use him in close, uh, third and short, and around the goal line. Like, he's just the more reliable veteran guy. Um, I would guess that we do see him kind of go back. James Cook maybe more in the high 30 to low 40% snap range, and um, Devin Singletary more in the 60, low 60s, high 50s, that type of, you know, where he's taking back over the backfield. Week 18, it flipped Cook's way. And I think that maybe when they play the Bengals, likely when they potentially play the Chiefs, that we do see a lot more James Cook there, but not this week. Any of you guys have any insane DFS opinions on this game before we move on? Any mm-hmm. Colby, Colby Parkinson level plays or not really? It's, no, it's both tough. these teams operate so much with like clarity and yes, the, on digs and Gabe Davis are going to play every snap. And then they'll use guys who won't get touches. Someone say said or... Wilson. Come on, just say it. Mm, not me. Not saying oh, it. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 I got one. I got one. Isaiah McKenzie. Then he's too excited. This is going to be terrible. <laughs> I, I, Isaiah McKenzie missed practice uh, this week. Oh, so no. what does that mean, folks? Uh, it's Cole Beasley. No. Oh, no. no like, I was trying no, to remember no. if he was on, he, he was promoted on Thursday. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, the speech wow. is free. Cole stream. Beasley is back. The speech is indeed free from both Cole and for Denny. Um, but, like, yeah. a Jalen Waddle, isn't that kind of a galaxy brain play at this point? Like, no one oh, wants yeah. to touch this passing game. Well, so to it, they Wilson. should. Jalen Waddle extension of the running game this weekend like almost absolutely yeah it, it could be one of those classic 12 to 14 target games for Jalen Waddle I Tyree like. Kill uh you know per his uh DraftKings price point I mean he could he could have like six percent roster ship or something or like, yeah. or like even lower this is crazy let's get brain in let's get brain in yeah you, you could you could get galaxy brain with the Dolphins yeah. passing <laughs> you sure could <laughs> yeah, you, you sure sure could the fighting Brian Dables arrive in Minnesota as three-point underdogs after nearly beating the Vikings on Christmas Eve, Denny Carter. Uh, Denny, you made the case on Tuesday's podcast that this is an open-and-shut Giants victory, and I want you to give you the floor to further refine your argument. This is a, a matchup between two bad defenses, okay, and ba- d- two defenses that have actually gotten worse as the season has gone on. So I do think that this has shootout potential, they combined for 51 points uh, when they met, met in week 16, 833 total yards between the two teams. So lots of back and forth stuff. Uh, I think that we'll see something like that here. Now, uh, if Wink Martindale, the, the defensive coordinator for the Giants, if he can ratchet back a little bit on the aggressiveness, on the blitzing, I think this could be a pretty, a, 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 a possibly full Kirk Cousins experience type of game. I, I would love it. I mean, I always love that. Yeah, so. I know you do. I know it's one of your it's one of your passions in, in life. It actually is. It makes me a bad person. And because uh, cousins cousins has been good when when teams relatively good when teams blitz him right. And we we all know Martindale. Loves um, if you blitz. make this, I think he is throwing four picks no matter what. No, but if you drop back and don't blitz, that's when he throws the pick. That's what I'm saying. If you drop back and like he has time to too much yeah. time to process and think, and there's the extra defenders, he's like. <laughs> and, and so, it, okay, so that uh, I want to I want to point out, New York's getting back, 
uh, at least two key parts of the secondary uh, this week. I don't know if they're going to be 100% healthy, but you know who who cares about that? We, we, they're going to get they're going to be healthier than they were when they faced the Vikings last time. I, that sounded cold and heartless. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I care, but I, I, I care a lot about Dory Jackson. I just want to <laughs> be clear here. And and but it, it, so if if they can just sit back and let Cousins throw into that sort of coverage, I think that's where the Giants. Uh, can can get ahead, and I think Saquon Barkley is what the Zoomers are calling a smash play here because he he's getting he's seeing more involvement in the past game as the as the season wound down in the, in the final month. Uh, the Vikings have allowed the ninth high, uh, the ninth most running back receptions, so I I like him no matter the game script. I like Barkley. Kyle, how do we prioritize Giants pass catchers? Because Denny's saying you know it could be a potential shootout. I, Vegas agrees with that. One of the highest over unders of playoff weekend it's a soft vikings pass defense but it's like how do you decide if you're betting on between darius slayton isaiah hodgins richie james like no one who has any actual juice how in the world do you prioritize them in dfs i mean in this game i do think they will have juice like you said one of the highest totals a terrible minnesota defense minnesota is top yeah i just five. mean like an individual talent level like these are not we're never dying to bet they, they all like look the same like dots on the page like yeah. they're well, all like second you, you go out and cover isaiah hodgins put your dot on the map <laughs> no i mean the thing is there's not like strong delineations between them in terms of volume they obviously play different roles richie james gets almost all of his work in the slot from week 13 to week 17, their final five games, obviously throwing out a week to 18 in which they didn't play their starters. Uh, one, only three receivers saw a target, which makes things nice, cut and dry to, to break nice. through. It is nice. It's always nice to see a clean spreadsheet. Uh, Richie James, 23% target share, 27% air yard share. He also has been by far the most efficient receiver in that stretch and on the year with uh, nearly two yards per out run, about 1.8, as opposed to Isaiah Hodgins and Darius Slayton, who basically play similar similar roles they're both deep threats for a team that doesn't threaten deep that often they both have just north of a 30 percent air yard share and hovering around 20 percent target share and they're both almost exactly as efficient like 1.36 and 1.39 yards per route run i personally go with slayton just because i it's a talent thing for me i think he's probably better he's but really better I, player. I, I, I think so, but the numbers... Yeah, I mean, we're, like, we, we, we hope so. We hope he Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, the numbers say, like, they're both earning the same role. They're both averaging... Him and Hodgins are both earning very similar roles in terms of target share and air yard share. They are both uh, about as efficient on a per-route basis, and they both run almost exactly the same amount of routes in the past five games that they've had them all playing. So, Slayton is a little more Mountain Dew. They're let's, both diet. Let's give Slayton some more credit, because he earned the role first. He became a bigger part of after the After they tried literally everything else. After they tried literally yeah, after everyone. They, but after they, they put him in the Kenny Galladay zone. <laughs> Go ahead. But they hadn't tried literally everyone because they weren't playing Hodgins yet. So was, <laughs> he wasn't Hodgins, ahead in line. Wasn't Hodgins and, like on the Bills this, this year? Was it last well, year? Well, let's, let's, let's not get in the weeds of why they hadn't tried, tried Hodgins. <laughs> sure. Yes, he was on a different team. Uh, that's that's also an indictment of him, to be clear. <laughs> but... But if you expand the sample to the season, Slayton has 1.79 yards per out run, which is much more respectable and leads the Giants. And so, if you're, I would break ties towards him if you're kind of thinking they're all even. But I don't. I'm it's not not banging the table here for for uh, Darius Slayton. But I think you know, slight slight edge over the others. Is Kenny Galladay still on this team? They didn't. I don't think they. He cut played him, last right? week. He <laughs> played. Yeah, he caught a touchdown. Oh my god! He needed Webb yeah. to unlock him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every time i laugh you can hear how congested i still am after uh whoa. it's only you've only been sick for seven months so, you know yeah, it takes listen, time it's totally normal it's totally it normal by, by the way i'm not like actually sick by the way <laughs> no I'm, I'm like uh yeah i've just had this horrible cough and you know i haven't been able to feel my midsection in six weeks uh but i'm fine no yeah i don't know i had a couple of colds in a row crane what is the passing game matchup like for the Minnesota Vikings? The Giants do not pop in any defensive EPA metrics. Denny does mention they're getting a little healthier, though. Yeah, they, they look pretty uninspiring um, mm -hmm. in EPA, but they're worse against the run than the pass. They rank 30th in EPA allowed per rush. Um, they're they're more middling to poor in EPA allowed per pass, just 20th. Um, but not they're not like brutally bad. So. I wonder, part of me wonders if maybe the Vikings, which have been a balanced team this year, are balanced here or maybe even run first here. And, man, the Giants would love that. 
That mm-hmm. that's exactly what they want, right? We saw this with the Packers when they beat the Packers earlier in the year. It's like the Giants just want you to let them hang around. That's their whole thing. So if the Vikings, I think, attack aggressively through the air, then even though the matchup isn't as you know, the, the passing defense isn't as weak as the run defense, I still think it's a better route for the Vikings because it's just more likely that, you know, this turns into a high scoring game and then the Giants have to hang with Daniel Jones and they've been trying to protect and hide him all year. So that's, I think, maybe the concern here for the Vikings in a sense is that the the run defense might be too alluring and they, they let the Giants lurk. Well, there's one thing I know. The Vikings like to unveil horrible game plans. They have over very many different coaches. and uh, But I'm about to Google, is it normal to sound like an accordion when laughing for two and a half hours? I'm starting to feel guilty when I make jokes. I, have to say. <laughs> I know, I know. Actually, I, I sometimes will make Pat laugh and I'm like... Sorry, you start I, sounding yeah. like Tiny Tim every time I laugh. Uh, I, I'm sorry for being so funny and charming. I don't, I don't need to. That's true. Please this is stop. a form of censorship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. If you laugh, then I start just coughing. Um, hope you're happy. Um, so that's why, that's why we keep it very serious. Uh, we'll be right back. Download the Rotor World app to receive breaking player news all season long. Stay ahead of the competition by favoriting players on your roster. Get the latest injury updates, player news, and much more delivered right to your phone. It is available in your app store today. But I don't know what it's like on the East Coast, but everyone everyone I know around here is, is basically like got like midsection rattle like I do. I, like I, every other person you, I run into is like, yeah, I'm on an antibiotic. Uh, I've been coughing for two months. Um, it's been, been quite a, yeah, quite a bug uh, season. I went to CVS the other day to get some cold medicine for the family and uh, they didn't have any. So that no, was no. Uh, concerning. And I felt like it may be indicative of what's going on in the country. I feel like a lot of people are sick. They are. I'm and, sick. Yeah. I was fighting something that I feel like it's just been kind of going up and down the head and the throat. You know, yeah. Just kind of yins and yangs. Yeah. And, yeah but by the way, Denny getting cold medicine for the family, you drank the entire bottle while watching Titans Jaguars. <laughs> just to be honest. <laughs> You wanted to feel something, anything. Twin Peaks, but, you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, you, I should not joke about that. <laughs> so, yeah, not a good, not a smart thing to do. Um, ravens Bengals. Uh, this would be the worst game of the weekend were it not for the Skylar Thompson Bowl. Crane, Lamar Jackson seemingly is not playing. Even Tyler Huntley's questionable. It does seem like he will play. Is there any hope of a Ravens upset? I ask as I wrote in my, my playoff rankings column, there is no hope of a Dolphins upset. I think there's some like you can at least like make a case for a Ravens upset, but it's still uh, not good odds. I don't feel like there's really much of a of a case here. I mean, the downgrade from Lamar Jackson to Tyler Huntley has been massive this what year. What happened to Huntley, man? Huntley had like a little juice last year, and this year yeah. he's got he, nothing. Yeah, the funny thing about like one point three game samples is that sometimes <laughs> not the most depictive of what's he going did have on. a wide receiver last year. Rashad yeah, like, still played football. Maybe that applies to Brock Purdy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, but don't get me wrong, I would love it. I, I'm sorry <laughs> to 49ers fans, but like college watching Kyle Shanahan tilt is another kind of one of, one of <laughs> my sick Kirk Cousins joys. But uh, anyways, <laughs> how in the world do the Ravens uh, win this football game, Pat? They don't. Uh, Tyler Huntley is 35th in EPA per play, uh, and he's not fully healthy. And they're going against Joe Burrow and the Bengals. They, it is the Ravens contain Joe Burrow twice this season. He only had two touchdowns in two games against them, average 250 yard, 15 yards passing. Uh, the, the Bengals' pass protection issues, you know, have gotten even worse. Lyle Collins is not having a good season, but he's out for the year. Burrow still takes so many sacks he didn't have a single clean sheet all year by the way yeah he um, that's his thing he likes doing that he really does like doing that but yeah i mean the ravens run games at least healthy am i right guys uh, well gus edwards isn't healthy so he's he's back practicing he is back practicing kyle i don't know if, uh, uh, i don't know if he's entirely healthy but uh, I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I mean i mean listen yeah sure he is brain you know, yeah he's, he's back practicing let's put it that way yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'd be more concerned, frankly, with this Tyler Huntley thing. Like, he didn't even throw footballs in practice on Wednesday. Like, That's he fine. was limited, quote, no limited, deal. but uh, I, I know they're going to run a Sounds lot. Sounds like someone who's getting a shot 90 minutes before the game. Let's just be real. Definitely. Yeah. 90, 30, 15, and 5 before the game. Oh, man. Uh, let, let me tell you, though, Anthony Brown, like all Ravens 
I know he might not, he might, he might start, might, might not start, but Anthony Brown, like all Ravens quarterbacks throws to the tight end. Isaiah likely. I, if I, if I'm not mistaken, is Isaiah likely had the second most expected receiving points of all pass catchers last week. Wow. I saw like 13 or some targets. Maybe, yeah. Or maybe like 16. So, that totally checks out. So Anthony Brown starting does not put me off. Mark Andrews is what I'm saying. Wow. I like that take. Mark so Andrews I, gets I was going to targets here. I, I'll just segue that into my question was, here's, I wrote it. So uh, the Ravens quote unquote <laughs> offense, Kyle, any DFS juice for any of these jokers? Sorry. I'm, yeah, I, like, I, I jumped the tracks. There. No, 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 no but, that's no, fine. Good. He took, he yeah. took on a segment. I was not particularly excited to do even the receivers. Like last week, obviously like last week isn't a true representative sample, though they didn't sit any of their actual wide receivers. Marcus Robinson ran a route on just two third of Anthony Brown's dropbacks. He did see some targets. I think it was nine, but I'm not looking forward to this passing game unless you're getting the tight end role, which in, in fact is the number one pass catcher by a pretty considerable margin. Only guy I'd play in terms of pass catchers. So you guys want to take a quick quiz? Is a uh, school? Watkins, how fun? Yeah, is, is Sammy Don't Watkins worry. still on the Ravens roster right now? Yeah, he is. I, I know would say that. yes. I thought he wasn't, but he actually is. <laughs> he had a long, he had a long catch. Oh, you're where right. you where you knew like halfway through the catch. Oh, he's, he's fumbling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, Denny, how did the play end? And and, and he ended, it ended with a fumble because he's. I mean, he's literally just like kind of like half jogging down the field with the ball sort of out over here, like Lashawn McCoy used to carry it, and the the Bengals defenders are just furiously whacking at the ball the whole way, and you're like. Oh my God! Sammy Watkins thinks that he's just walking around the field by himself. There are <laughs> defenders trying to get the ball, and then it, it co- of course it comes out. And you're like, of course, how could oh it not? Gosh. He's there got was... two bowling pins and a football. He's just juggling them <laughs> down the field. <laughs> Do you, like uh, just on the Sammy Watkins thing, like fantasy football is so crazy. Where like in 2014, if for for those who don't remember, Kyle, there was <laughs> absolute consensus mm-hmm. that the that not only was Sammy Watkins the top wide receiver in the rookie class, but that like no one was even close. This is a wide receiver class that included Mike Evans, Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson, Odo Beckham Jr. Like we don't know anything. <laughs> no, I mean the yeah, Bills yeah, like, traded up into the top five to take him. That's how sure. insane it was. Sure. And he he had okay and he won a Super Bowl. Sure, so but... who's laughing now? Yeah, it was, a, it was a different time. It was a different country back then. Um <laughs> Danny, how do we choose our Bengals receiving fighter? By the way, um, I mean, I, I I'm looking for a reason to be like T. Higgins, but I can't. So yeah. uh, it's just Jamar Chase, and Jamar Chase saw 25 targets in two games against uh, the Ravens this year. Scored a touchdown last week. Probably should have had a bigger game than he did. Um, you know, I I think it's no secret that the Bengals are probably going to lean pretty hard on the run. I'm sorry, on the pass against the pass funnel defense in the in the Ravens. Uh, so I, I I guess I guess if you if you're thinking Burrow is going to break out of this little funk that he has against Baltimore, then you probably want to stack him with with both Higgins and and Chase. But uh, I'm kind of cool to Higgins and, and feel free you guys to push back here if I'm if I'm missing something. Anything Higgins is good. Him? He's a very good player. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's, good. He, he's uh, you know, it's like we talk about like with Waddle. Like Tyreek Hill's great, but Jalen Waddle's very, very good. And in this case, we're not concerned about the offense, but you would be doing it with more of a game theory aspect in mind. In that, right. a lot of the Burrow teams are just playing him with Chase single stack, whereas getting Higgins will be at least a little bit more of a unique way to approach what should be like a high scoring team. Uh, Higgins is very good. He's a good player. He's no Jamar Chase, but. I like that guy. He's going places. I like anyone that honors the LaShawn McCoy bread loaf carry, by the way. So shouts to Sammy Watkins yeah. for uh, paying tribute to a legend in week 18. Uh, so, but the Ravens are eight and a half point dogs. They have Vegas has four and a half more points of respect for the Ravens um, than the Dolphins, which I do agree with. I, I do think there's a world in which they do just like play keep away and they sack Joe Burrow four times. And it's like a 17 to 16 Bengals victory. But I still, I mean, I, there's no way I would ever, like, I, I, it, it's a, a very, very long shot scenario. But I think it is more plausible than the Dolphins beating the Bills. I'll, I'll say that. Sure, yeah. 
Um, the Dallas Cowboys versus Tom Brady is a television executive's dream, but a Cowboys fan's nightmare, Kyle. Many are already chalking this up as a Bucks victory, including, I believe, Denny Carter, even though the Cowboys remain modest road favorites. How does Dallas avoid the road upset? What? So road is we're using that kind of like loosely here because speaking of no fans, Cowboys fans will take over whatever the Buck Stadium is called. It's the one with the pirate ship in it. It is, yeah. They still State. have that pirate ship? I think it's the bank. They do still have the pirate ship. Do you just think every stadium in Florida is called the bank? No, they are. Yeah, it's <laughs> really hard to tie. Yeah. yeah. Do you know one that's not? Yeah. <laughs> every southeastern football stadium is called the bank. It's science. That's true. Actually, Charlotte's a bank stadium. <laughs> well, there you go. So yeah. Uh, was anyways, it the Dolphins won the crypto one. I guess that's yeah, a, that no, no, that was the uh, Hard Rock or whatever, right? You know, hard Rock no, Cafe yeah. Stadium. Um, the it was crypto was the Lakers, and who just lost? It was the the, 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 the Heat were also a crypto, but yeah, no, I, they are no I, longer I, 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 a crypto. Okay. okay. Since the executive of that company is now under federal house arrest <laughs> in uh, Palo Alto, <laughs> California. <laughs> That'll change the name of your stadium. Yeah, that will yeah. change the name Pretty of your quickly. stadium. Kyle, how do we change the course of this podcast? How does Dallas avoid the upset? I mean, I mean, there's an obvious way they can do it. They won't do this, but they could pass more. Dak is really good. Like he is right Ooh. now. Really, is he? He's oh, he's gonna finish the year eighth in ETA per play, and he had. Why does he lead the league in picks in only 15, 12 games? Dude, then, I, oh my God! Let me show you the video of these interceptions. Do you see the ones where his players volleyball set them into the defenders' hands and they take them back to the house? Watch the film. Watch the so video. Oh, God. I am begging you. Well, is that for the Commanders one where he rehearsed the pick and yeah. then threw it the next play? Yeah. Um, Look, I'm not saying he's – actually, sure, he can be Patrick Holmes. Remember when Mahomes last year spent the first two months of the true. season only getting intercepted? Remember when Josh Allen gets in the red zone just – Oh, he loves throwing it to the other linebackers. Boy, That's good. That. If you look at plays that aren't turnovers, which I can show you the tape of how many of his turnovers are just downright garbage. The fact that you they go down. tape guy. You're Dude. so tilted you became a tape guy. <laughs> I can also, if you want the numbers to it, he's like 14th in turnover worthy play rate and first in interceptions. The, one of those numbers is sticky and the other yeah, one there you go. is the there one you go. where his players volleyball set him to the defenders. Uh, if you take away turnovers, he's number four in EPA per play. Uh, the downside is they don't care. They have one game. They finally got one game. I know Corrine and I kind of both know this, that up until I think week 17, they had not top zero pass rate over expected. They got to two, I believe, in week 17. They're, yeah, hang a banner, boys. Hang a banner. And then they were like negative 14 the next week. So uh, they're not going to... You know, they're neither watching the film or checking the PFF turnover where they play stats. They're going to play balance, which will keep the Bucks in this. And another thing they could do if they want to play balance is give Tony Pollard the ball more. Tony Pollard ranked third in rushing yards over expected per attempt. Zeke ranked 40 spots below that very near league bottom. So they won't do that either, though. And instead, um, it's probably reasonable for this game to be about a field goal spread. I have one other thing. This is is kind of a gross thing to say. Mm -hmm. I could go for some more T.Y. Hilton. He's been Me too. really good Me on too. a very small sample. On a yeah, very, very small sample. Show. You're supposed to end the show that way. It's not quite over yet. <laughs> he's he's still got some juice. He's he's got three point nearly three point five yards per hour. That is not something that will be stable. But I mean. Noah Brown is second on this team, and he's like 76th in yards per route run. And when you take away the non dac starts, it doesn't get any better. And Michael Gallup is below that. Dalton Schultz has been pretty solid with Dak under center. He's like the 11th, uh, 11 tight end yards per route run since Dak came back. So sure, throw some Schultz. But like Hilton, a lot of his stuff has come on first reads. It's, it's a very small sample, but he's been really good when he's been the first read. So let him mix it up a little more. Not too much. But That's right. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Kyle. But yeah, I'm I'm with you. T. Y. Hilton. I'm gonna I'm gonna name him the guy you need for Ooh, DFS wow. this week. He's the All guy. Right. You need. 32, 3200 on DraftKings. Give me a break. That's wow. pretty good. It's pretty insane. Um, Crane, tell us the Bucks will stay pass heavy after it got them into the playoffs in Week 17 against the Panthers, or now that like the games you know count, are they gonna go back to don't lose mode instead of trying to win the game mode? Yeah, so this uh, very conservative coaching staff has been doing completely illogical things all season. They saw the light against the Panthers. We can now trust that they will continue doing that against a run funnel Cowboys defense. There's absolutely no way that they revert 
to a completely ridiculous run first game plan that puts them in a position to lose. Great. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> Great. Uh, love to hear it. Absolutely love to hear that. Um, man, that's, that was even more depressing way to end the show than T.Y. Hilton. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can talk about T.Y. again if you want. Because <laughs> uh, I was going to say the priority cowboy in DFS was my question to Denny. And then he said, not only was T.Y. Hilton the priority cowboy, he's the priority every team player. This he's weekend. the guy you need. Trust me, come Monday night. You're going to want those four catches for 80 yards and two touchdowns. That's Ooh, what I'm there saying. You go. I have some more depressing stuff on the Bucks, actually. Oh, let it Play it on us. So, okay. Tom Brady this year, he leads the NFL in the shortest time, the quickest time to throw. He gets He's getting the ball out very quickly. The Buccaneers are pass protecting well. They rank fourth in PFF's pass block. I couldn't rates. believe that when I saw that this week. Yeah, you can't believe it because Tom Brady's acting like he's getting hit all the time. I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> he has no interest, no interest in getting hit at all. He is not going to hang in the pocket. He's already getting the ball as the quickest quarterback in the league. He's going to be checking down, throwing short. So you can talk about, you know, maybe they'll go pass first. They might. They might have a positive pass rate of expected. We're talking about the Cardinals version. Where he's where Lenny's getting dump off, dump off, dump off. We're not talking about Mike Evans getting loose deep against the Carolina Panthers. I think that was a one off. I don't really like the Bucks this week. I I think the Cowboys, you know, they're definitely flawed, but I think they're set up to to win this game. I would I would be going with them. Um, and I think I think the Buccaneers are going to be very uninspiring on offense, very conservative, whether it's short underneath passes or runs, and, and probably a mix of both. And Tom Brady is on to the Las Vegas Raiders. Is what you're saying? Um, we're on to Vegas. Something. Um, Jets, maybe? Jets. Jets yeah. yeah, maybe the 49ers. I don't know. Uh, we're on to that oil rig team you were talking about. They need to try right. uh, Louisiana Roughnecks um, <laughs> out on the rig in the XFL. <laughs> out on the, so, yeah, it's a very, out on the rig. very unique video. Uh, or very unique, vi- unique visual. Um, but it's very hard to get on TV because – the rig kind of shakes around a little bit, so it's hard to have a steady camera. <laughs> uh, so they put a warning at the beginning of the broadcast not to watch it. You know, if that kind of stuff bothers you. Um, yeah, I got to end the show. <laughs> really got to end the show. Yeah, I can't believe it's still going. The show is <laughs> over. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff on the site, even though it's the playoffs. I have some play. I, I ranked the teams 1 to 14. Kyle, you have some postseason tournament rankings up on the site, correct? Yeah, and they will be up to date by the time this podcast drops. Got to update for some injury stuff and uh, DFS article coming out uh, later this week. And Denny, you're dropping a, a preview opus, correct? Yeah, that's right. You know, eventually, at some point in the near future, that that article will be on the website. It breaks down. It breaks down all the all six games. Mostly, it's mostly about T.Y. Hilton, though, I'll have to be honest. Oh, wow. There you go. Craner, I'm sorry. I can't remember if you have an article this week or not. There's I this, Okay, I say no is not a wrong answer. I would, I, but, uh... Yeah, that was, there was hope of one. There, was, there is not one. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I've been going through some stuff off the field. Uh, so, <laughs> tends to happen. Doing some research on municipal bonds. <laughs> Tends to happen. I'm looking at property in the Caymans. When you when you get the two mil, you tend to have to focus a little off the field. So um, for Patrick Corain, for Denny Carter, for Kyle Dvorak, I'm Patrick Darty. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoy the playoffs. Corain, Kyle, and I will be back Sunday evening to recap the entire weekend of action. And Denny and I will be back next Tuesday. Um, thanks for listening. We'll be back later. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.